my hair has gotten so long like I'm gonna need a haircut soon but <laughs> I'm, I'm so scared to get a haircut this has never happened to me in my life I've never been scared to get a haircut or get it get it cut too short but I think I'm gonna wait until it's like down here and then I'm just gonna be like just even it out because there are pieces that are way longer than other pieces and it's just kind of a mess hello everyone I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel when he reads where I where I post weekly videos about books basically <laughs> I always say where I talk about books and things but really I just talk about books I don't talk about things although I have been wanting to do a video about um, my favorite indie movies because you don't know this about me I don't think but I actually got my um, master's degree in film anal film analytics and theory so I'm actually by like, my 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 education is in film analysis and crit criticism like I used to critique film for a living um, I don't anymore but um, I love indie movies and I love watching indie sci-fi movies and I would love to recommend some indie sci-fi movies to you based on some sci-fi books that I like so um, I guess I do talk about things sometimes but mostly I talk about books it's such a long intro anyway so today I thought I would discuss with you books that should have worked for me but somehow they didn't and also some books that I think would work for me but I'm not interested in reading them you follow me good the first thing we have to do though is discuss what actually what I like in a book because I think you know if you if you if you think of my channel I think most people think oh sci-fi but I actually like a very specific type of sci-fi and I don't like a lot of sci-fi you know like for example Adrian Tchaikovsky just doesn't write for me um, he's the one that wrote children of time I read that I didn't like it so the books that I like in first of all I do like science fiction clearly it's my number one genre as you can see <laughs> I have a whole shelf dedicated to science fiction not like well it's a small shelf but there's more sci-fi anyway tangent I love science fiction but there's this type of science fiction that I like I like mostly soft science fiction where you know basically the definition of soft varies from person to person but for me, soft science, <laughs> soft science fiction means that the focus is not on the science element of the book, um, but rather more other parts of the book, if you get it. It's not like we're not going to focus on how does gravity work in this situation and why we can't travel to other planets. No, no, no. Every planet has gravity and blah, blah, blah. And it's, you know, very Star Wars-y. Like, <laughs> you can travel to any planet you want, whatever. <laughs> you know, it's like... Not, not even a question so that's kind of it I know that for some people soft sci-fi doesn't include space travel but for me for example the Wayfarer series is soft sci-fi because it does even though it has space travel and aliens and stuff like that it, we're not focused on that we're focused more on the characters so it's more soft sci-fi in, in, in that respect I also love character driven books I don't like books that are like um, big political things, space operas of that sort. Um, I don't mind a space opera because, like I said, a space opera in my my mine and my alone rule book can be a soft sci-fi. Again, the Wayfarer series is a is um an example of that. Um, uh, Do you dream of Terra Two? Could be another example of soft sci-fi for me. Um, there's just many many examples of of that. But I like it when we focus on character and and studying characters and their relationships and stuff like that i'm sorry there's like a cat hair on my mouth i think i got it no yeah so that's the kind of book that i like but other than that i do read other things i read um i read a lot of hard hitting contemporary one of my favorite books of all times is a monster calls by patrick ness obviously hard hitting contemporary um i think this is more middle grade but I think people are like sitting on middle grade. You should get on that train. And well, there's also Orbiting Jupiter, which I've read two times now because I've loved it so much. Uh, both of these books um, deal with loss and grief, and and I I like that. I like contemporary. And when that mixes in with sci-fi, it's just it's 
it's amazing. So that is mostly what I read, but I also like horror. Now I realized that when I was younger, I liked horror a lot more, but lately I need my happy endings, man. Like the world is already, <laughs> Somebody said, I don't know who was it, was it Sam from Thoughts on Tomes? I think it was Sam from Thoughts on Tomes that somebody said that if I wanted to if I wanted to read 500 pages of Grimdark then I would just turn on the news every day and that's true like I want happy endings or at least an ending where I feel it's happy enough for me because honestly the world is is, is giving me all the unhappiness necessary also i'll be right back you might see some changes because my camera is flashing so basically that's it and i also like dark academia books but i think this falls into this like you know coming of age kind of dark story well, i don't really like fantasy we all know that but that's the type of book that i like and i also like a little bit of strangeness to my books but we'll see that i don't actually like a lot of strangeness to my books i think people think that because I like Born, which is right here, <laughs> I'm not going to get it out, because people think I like Born, um, they think that I really like more of that kind of strange fever dream sort of thing, but I actually don't. So I have my phone here with some books that I have read that are just not for me. They're not for me. Sorry. There's nothing wrong with these books except that they were supposed to be the perfect book for me. Like they're they're supposed to encompass everything I love in a book and just they, they didn't work out for me. Of course, I'm going to be inserting pictures here, so don't worry. You'll get to see the books even though I I do have one of these. I know I have one of these. No, I have a lot of them actually. But I just don't want to get them because they're in my um other pile of books. I just don't want I don't feel like Put it up books today, okay? <laughs> Work with me here. So the first book I'm, I want to talk about is Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. Just recently I said that I liked Annihilation. I can't talk. That I liked Annihilation by um, Jeff Vandermeer. But the truth is, I have no fucking idea what happened. <laughs> but I and, and I liked parts of it. Like I really, really liked parts of it. But most of it, I was just like what the fuck am I reading? I actually like the movie better. I don't know if that's like a hot take because um, a lot of people didn't like the movie, but I actually really liked um, the movie. I thought it gave it like a nice realness, reality that the book was missing. Also, there was a lot of things in the book that just, I, like that book haunts me though. That book haunts me. And I tried to like it, but it's just, it wasn't for me because I didn't get attached to the characters and if I'm not attached to the characters then the book is just not gonna work for me like it's definitely not gonna be something that I'm gonna be interested in and the characters in this book while interesting and I think it was really great of Jeff Vandermeer to write an all-women cast for his book I think um, he missed the mark on making them real as in making them feel real enough for me to buy the story and for me to care about the characters and i just didn't care i didn't care and, and also it was it was like taking a bad lsd trip because i i got no answers by the end of it by the end of it i was just as confused as it was in the beginning i got nothing nothing out of it it was a great ride don't get me wrong here's i think one of those things where it was a great ride, but the payoff wasn't there for me. I just didn't get any payoff from this book. That's why this is one of those books that even though it has all the elements that you think that I would like in a book, I actually didn't like the book. So that that's it. Like I, I, it's not I didn't like it. I want to defend it. Oh, and one more thing. I'm not including books in here that I just didn't understand because I did understand annihilation as far as you can understand annihilation but um i just didn't it it's not on my favorites shelf it's not something that i would pick up again you know <laughs> that's why i kept the french copy because i'm not gonna pick it up again but the french copy is so pretty so yeah annihilation is one of the books that um should have called to me but didn't the next one we have is Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Now, I have already mentioned this. I just didn't like the fact that, I don't know, it was too space opera for me. The characters, I didn't 
I didn't like I didn't feel their plight I didn't understand it and I and I and I like following one character through their ordeals I don't like this idea of like, generational things it just doesn't it just doesn't call to me also I just don't know I found it very boring I found the spiders um they were very well written like don't get me wrong these books are books that are really well written but they just didn't merge for me i think one of the things that i don't like about books is big world building i forgot to mention that before so i'm just mentioning it now this this video is a mess i'm sorry but i just don't like big world building and i think adrian Tchaikovsky and a lot of very famous space opera writers focus a lot on world building and i don't care about world building like like i said i started my sci-fi journey with two things i started with the animorph series and star wars and if you see in those two we don't get a lot of world building i mean we we get we, we barely get any world building and that's what I like. I don't like world building. That's also one of the reasons why I don't like high fantasy because it focuses a lot usually, not always, you know, things change. <laughs> but they don't focus on world building and um, I think Adrian Tchaikovsky is somebody that focuses a lot on world building and that's just not my cup of tea. So um, I didn't like the big spiders in space thing. It just wasn't my deal. Um, I, I, I finished it. 3.5 speed just to say that I finished it but I don't think I will be picking up another Adrian Tchaikovsky for a long time the next one I have is Phantom of the Opera now I put this here because I do like dark reads if you see my shelf over here we have magic for liars we have the magicians we have uh, the monstrumologists we have night film we have station 11 we have you know it, this is pretty dark the um, uh, flowers in the attic series I like dark stories and this is definitely a dark story the problem is I don't like romance in books I really don't like the romance has to make sense to me somehow and in this book it just didn't really make sense and it was I think overly over the top romantic for my liking and I just didn't enjoy it and again it reminded me of Frankenstein Frankenstein is my least favorite book of all time so I just even though I read it I just was tortured throughout the whole thing because I didn't enjoy it. So there you go. Frank, it, not, not Frankenstein, Phantom of the Opera. The next one is going to hurt a lot of people. I do own this trilogy. I don't think I'm going to get rid of it. I just think that this trilogy promised me something that didn't wasn't delivered at the end. And that is the Broken Earth Trilogy by, it's by M.K. Jemison. I, I totally spaced out on that one. I was like, what? Okay, so the Broken Earth Trilogy by M.K. Jemison. I loved the first book. The first book was like, it was amazing for me. It was everything that I wanted and more in a book. It had soft sci-fi. It had character-driven stories. And then as we go on through the series, it becomes more and more fantastic fantastic fantasy <laughs> i was gonna say fantastical i'm sorry it becomes more and more of a fantasy series and by the end of it i was just reading a high fantasy series and i didn't like that you know and also i think nk jemison has a formula to writing her books which i'm not saying is a bad thing i'm not hating on nk jemison but the formula is character has to do something character avoids doing the thing that they have to do thus we get a big stretch of fucked upness because you're supposed to be doing something and by the time that they get to doing the thing that they're supposed to be doing it's too late it's the same thing that happens with um um the city we became by A.K. Jemison. i just didn't like that book because it had that formula it had that formula of we're supposed to be doing this but we're not gonna do this we're gonna do that and then we fucked up because we were supposed to be doing this all along so that's my thing with the Broken Earth trilogy. It just didn't it didn't land for me. That last book, I read it just to read it. It was it was so bad. It, it like got me into such a bad reading slump. The next book I have is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. Now I think this book would appeal to me because it's got that dark academia kind of dark setting. 
and it also has like an interesting character and we follow only one character except that I found that character completely unlikable and therefore I was not interested whether he survived or died or whatever happened to him I didn't care because the reality is I just didn't care about the character so if I don't care about the character that I'm following then what is even the point of me reading this book you know what I mean so I just didn't like it it was not to my liking and I did finish it um, and it was horrible it felt like it was like 500 pages when it was really like 280 or 300 pages I don't know um, I've talked about this before I love the cover I'm keeping it it was a gift from a wonderful friend um, but uh, sadly it just missed the mark for me I, I just didn't enjoy reading about this person and if I'm a character driven reader then why would I read a book where I'm not enjoying reading about the main character then we have the marrow thieves now I talked about this before this book I DNF'd I just originally this book was in my mind supposed to be about a dystopian society where um, people have stopped dreaming and the only people that can dream are Native Americans or First Nations people and they are being harvested by white people for their dreams and I think that that's an incredible concept the thing is this turned out to be m more about survival in the woods and you know survival in the woods <laughs> and I and I just didn't I, I'll be honest in this one I didn't like the writing style it's very rare that I don't like a writing style because usually I can get past almost any writing style I mean I read um, um, satellite by Nick Lake and that one is written in text speak so, you know, I can usually get through that. But there's something about this writer's writing style that just doesn't do it for me. It's it's hard for me to understand what she's saying. I'm sorry, I'm touching my hair. It's just that I just noticed that this hair is longer than uh. I just didn't I just didn't understand I don't understand the prose. It just didn't flow for me. It didn't move along you know it was really hard to get into and that's not something that happens very often but it did happen with this book and i wanted to see more of a dystopian society and not just you know the woods part maybe i would have gotten to that if i read past page 60 but i just couldn't do it i couldn't bring myself to read it and um i don't know why it just it didn't work for me and sometimes that's okay sometimes work books just don't work for you even though they're like they tick all your boxes and this book ticks all my boxes and yet it doesn't work for me i might wait until it comes out on audio or something because maybe that way i if i consume it in that format then it would be easier because honestly reading in physical form is not my favorite type of reading so i think if i read it in audio i would be able to get through it but in physical format it was just not gonna happen and the last book we have in the books that didn't work for me is The Handmaiden's Tale and this is well I'm, I'm pretty sure you all know about The Handmaiden's Tale by this point um, I just didn't like the prose again I didn't like how the book was written this book again takes all the boxes soft sci-fi hard-hitting following very few cast of characters and I just didn't like it and I didn't like it I remember I read it and I was like what is all the fuss about you know it's, I mean, I, I understand the, the political and social economic implications of the book, but I personally just didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy how it was written. And I don't know if um, that happened to anyone else, but definitely happened to me. And I was not, I was not amused. I really didn't like that book. It was, it was really difficult for me to get through to the point where yeah, I, I got through it just to say, yes, I have read The Handmaiden's Tale, but um, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it one little bit. It wasn't, and again, it was the writing style. The writing style was the thing that did it for me. If it had been something else, if it had been like, I don't know, I didn't like the characters, because I did like the characters. I thought the characters were very interesting. I thought the story was interesting. I just didn't like how the book was written. And, you know, that's, the cookie crumbles now here i have three books that i think i will never read but that still would be books that people have recommended to me 
or that I feel fall into the category of books I would like. And I have three of them. And, and I might end up reading these in the future. We don't know. There's one that I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to read, but I might end up reading them. And then we'll see if they really, if they fall into these categories. If you see them in one of these videos in the future or not. The first one we have is House of Leaves. Um, I tried to read House of Leaves. I thought it was going to be like the super scary, like the scariest book you've ever read thing. And I was bored. I was so bored by page 20, but I have seen a resurgence of, of House of Leaves lately on booktube and a lot of people seem to like it and I think I just have to push through. Um, I think I'm more intimidated by the size of the book. Don't make the joke. Don't make, don't make, that's what she said. I think I'm more intimidated by the size of the book than anything else. I think that to get anywhere, I have to read so much and it was so boring at the beginning. Um, in case you don't know, this is about a book, it, this is a, like a book within a book <laughs> about a, a, a man that finds another man has died and he um, finds documents about this house and there's a documentary about the house and it's a house that is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside from what I understand and it's supposed to be really scary, it's supposed to be really scary but I, well, I didn't get to the scary part. <laughs> I just, I just got to a lot of expositional dialogue and I was bored. But I might give this book another chance. The next book I have is Song of Achilles. I um, studied arts in order to get my master's in uh, film. And I, I've read the myths. I know what goes down. I don't want to cry. <laughs> I, I don't want to fall in love with two people that I feel... Which, by the way, just I, I'm gonna throw this out there. the The idea, the, the the idea of romance that we have today is definitely not the idea the ro of romance that the um, Greeks had in Hellenic. Is it Hellenic? I think it's Hellenic times. Um. So, I I also feel like it's like queer baiting because. Even if these two people had sex and loved each other, the idea of romance that they had is not the same as ours. So there's that. And, and then there's the fact that I know what the ending is. Like, come on now. I, why would I do that to myself? I know how this is. And I don't want to cry. I don't want to cry and I don't want to fall in love with two people that are not, you know, in case you don't know how it ends, you're going to cry. So I just don't want I don't want to do that to myself. That's why I'm probably never reading the Song of Achilles. Now watch me read it for the next next month or something and just destroy my heart. I just feel this book is gonna destroy my heart and I don't want my heart to be destroyed. That's that's the gist of it. And the last book we have is another one that I'm pretty sure that I'm never gonna read, and that is We Were Liars by I'm not saying the authors because you're seeing the picture and I don't remember all of the authors' names. But um, this book, from my understanding, reminds me a lot of my childhood. And I just don't think I want to go there. I don't, like I've always said, I don't, I don't like reliving my teenage years. And everything I've read about this book makes me feel like I'm going to relive my teenage years reading it. And that's just not a fun time for me. That, that, I... <laughs> I didn't have a happy teenagehood and I don't like reading about books that hit too close to home and I think this book is one of those books that is going to hit way too close to home. So I'm pretty sure I'm not reading it. I'm kind of tempted sometimes to be like, huh, maybe I should read that and then I'm like, yeah, yeah, and maybe you should, you know, cry for two hours. Why not? Maybe you should tell your therapist about that. Because I'm pretty sure that's going to be a book. <laughs> it's going to be like, so um, therapist, I read this book and we need to talk about it. So that's um, a book that even though it works perfectly for my taste in books. And I, I, I love reading about rich kids and their problems. Probably because at some point in my life I was one of those. Um, but this one in particular, I'm like, no. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Um, I don't want to read that one. That's pretty much.
much it. This is this video of things I like and things I don't like and things I should have liked but I didn't like and things that I might pick up in the future and that you might see in future videos. I actually had another video planned for you today but um, a reading slump back. Um, I think it's because of the hot weather um, or I don't know maybe because I'm taking a break from reading again. Who knows? Um, but yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you did, let me know about books that you've read that were supposed to be perfect for you and that didn't really work out for you in the end. So, um, I want to know all about them. Maybe they're some of my favorite books. That'd be interesting. But yeah, without further ado, I bid you adieu and I will see you in another galaxy far, far away. Bye!